For our blood typing experiment today, we're actually going to be working with something called Neo blood, which literally means that it's virtual blood. We're not using real blood. And the reason for that is just the risk of bloodborne pathogens. So with this experiment, however, I think it's a great idea to pretend like you're working with regular blood. So I put on gloves, and we're going to use the biohaz to discard of everything. And we're kind of going to pretend like we're working with real blood, because it's good to learn how to use precaution when, um, when you're blood typing. So um, we have a couple of different samples here. This first one we're calling patient one. And patient one has a different type of blood than patient two. And so we're going to um, do two different blood typing trays. So that's the first thing that you want to grab is your blood typing tray. And you'll notice on these trays, there's, um, there's actually three different wells. There's a well labeled A and a well labeled B. And then there's a well labeled RH. So to the well labeled A, we're going to put antibodies to type A blood. In the well label B, we'll put antibodies to type B blood. So what that means is that if it clumps in the B well, then that person has the type B antigens. So we could say they're type B. If it also clumped in the A well, we could say that it was type A. And then a person that clumped in both would be type AB. Now, that doesn't explain, however, the RH factor, which is another surface glycoprotein that people can have on their um, red blood cells. And in fact, 85% of us do. So the RH factor is more common to have than to not have. So in that one, we're gonna put antibodies to the RH factor, and we're gonna see whether the blood will clump or agglutinate is the technical term for that in this swab. So let's go ahead and begin, and we're gonna start with patient one, and we'll put one drop of blood into each of the three wells. And we'll just repeat that with patient two. So we'll just add a single drop of blood to each well. Now we're ready to add the antibodies, right? We know these are virtual antibodies. They're not really antibodies, but that's what we would be adding to well A. So this is the antibody to type A antigen. So people with the type A glycoprotein would interact with this antibody and agglutination would happen. So we'll add one drop to each one of the A wells. Now we're going to repeat that with the, the type B antibody in the B well. And then finally we'll grab the RH, the antibody to the RH factor and add that to the RH well. All right, now we're set, and we have a handy little light box that we can put these on to allow us to see the agglutination a little bit better. So we'll just set these onto the light boxes, and then we're gonna mix with a sterile toothpick. And see if we can see the agglutination. The best way to mix these is to really spread them around all over the bottom of the well. And as I'm doing that, can you see how nicely the well A is agglutinating? There just is a lot of clumpiness in that well. So this person clearly has the type A antigen on their blood cell and is interacting with the type A antibody. So this person has type A blood. Now the question remains, do they have just type A or do they have type AB? So let's mix around the B well and see if we see any clumpiness there. Already it looks like type B is a little harder to mix and I don't see any clumps. Spread that around all over. And as you can see, there's really no interaction. There's no agglutination. So this person lacks 
the type B glycoprotein that is, they do not have type B blood. So this person has type A blood. But the question remains whether they're Rh positive or Rh negative. So let's mix around that Rh factor. See what we can see. Oh yeah, look at that. This person is clearly amongst the greater 85% of the population that has that Rh factor. We see lots of clumpiness, lots of agglutination. So clearly that person has type A positive blood. Same type of blood I have. I say it stands for my grades. Um, a positive. Okay, so let's see what type this second patient has. So we'll start by mixing the A well once again. And right off, I don't see any agglutination there. So this one, this person does not have type A blood. Let's see about the B well. Okay, as we mix and mix a little more, looks like we're starting to get some clumps in that B well. I'm gonna come back and mix that a little bit more after we mix the RH factor, but it looks like that person may have type B blood. And, Mix the RH factor, and clearly that's negative. So this person is amongst the minority. RH negative. I'm going to remix the, the B well, but it looks to me like that's pretty clumpy. So we have someone who is A positive and someone who is B negative. 